Let's talk first about earnings, Tom, because you know we were talking about uh, the negative pre-announced by NVIDIA yesterday. Global Foundries had uh, what appeared to be a rather positive report this morning. The stock is up uh, just slightly in pre-market trading. What sort of tailwinds do you feel the company is benefiting from right now outside of Washington? No, I, I think it's the, the markets we play in. I, I would say three factors. One, you know, we have a global supply chain. And so the companies that are you know, kind of better balanced in their supply chain We'll be able to execute and prosecute their business when the demand is there. Uh, second, we play in a very you know, broad and diverse end markets. And so there are strong end markets right now. There are weaker ones. And uh, you know, we play in a, a, a broad range of those. We started the year with almost 25% more demand than our ability to, to fulfill that demand. And so it's been a little bit of a shock a shop, uh, absorber for us. And then the last thing I'd say is, you know, even in markets that are down, if you're winning market share, you could still grow your business. You know, look at our smart, if you, if you mm -hmm. read our release, our smartphone business, so, you know, mobile handset business, while handsets are down year over year, we grew 14% year on year because we're winning market share as the 5G transition takes place and the other applications of the features in, in a smartphone. Right. So I think that's what you're seeing in companies. They have good supply chain. They have a broad uh, market presence and they're winning market share. And then there's the big windfall that will come from the CHIPS Act, $52 billion uh, directly going to the industry in incentives, $24 billion in tax credits. But how long, Tom, will it take for the rubber to meet the road on that? The president's going to sign the bill into law today. How long will it take companies like yours to apply for, receive, and deploy those funds? I, I, first, I think that's a great question. I would, I would probably think somewhere over the next three to six months to actually start the application process because this is complex uh, work that needs to get done and it needs to be done well. Um, there are two phases of how you can add expansion. If, like in Global Foundry's case, we already have some existing space in our U.S. footprint that we can install tools, we could bring capacity on within, say, 18 months on the outside, two years. If you have to start you know, putting a shovel in the ground, creating a facility, and then building that out, that could take much longer. That could take up to three years from today given the fact that we won't start seeing funding or that alignment of funding for, say, three to six months. But the president and policymakers say that this will make the U.S. competitive. But, Tom, what happens if after this, after this becomes law and that money goes into the system, if companies like China and Taiwan and Singapore just increase their subsidies to the industry, what decisions would you make as an executive about where your supply chain is located? Uh, you know, I don't think this is one where it becomes an escalating uh, situation. It's about creating globally competitive uh, manufacturing. And you, you don't have to have 100% of, your, of your, your, your assets covered or your capital investment. You know, about a third of, of a project needs to be covered. Uh, and most of that investment comes from companies like GF to go build that capacity. And I think that's going to be uh, you know, the real measure here. And, you know, this $52 billion that you cited, Remember, that $52 billion is going to release $150 billion because it's a, about a 30% funding ratio. So it's a, it's a big pot of money when you think of the total capex it's going to deploy to creating semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.